When I installed Laravel 8 for the first time, there was one file that instantly caught my attention. Any guesses? Let's go ahead and create a new project. I'm just opening up my terminal here. We'll do composer create dash project and then Laravel slash Laravel. And we'll just call this project blog. Then let's just CD into our blog directory and business as usual, we'll just do PHP artisan serve. And now we have this local web server at 127.0.0.1 on port 8000. So I'm gonna open up Chrome and I'm just gonna paste that in there. All right, and here we go. We have a brand new Laravel project that we can start working on. So let's open up VS Code. I'm gonna open up my project. All right, everything looks pretty normal here. We have our app folder, bootstrap folder, config, database, public, resources, routes. We see our env file. We come down, we see our git ignore, our composer.json file. And then we see this new docker-compose.yaml file. That was never there before. Let's click on that. All right, so raise your hand if you've ever used Docker before. If your hand is up in the air right now, you're probably feeling the same excitement I felt the first time I created a new Laravel 8 project. If your hand is down, let me explain why you should be excited right now. So previous versions of Laravel required us, the developer, to create a local environment with all the bells and whistles to get our project up and going. That means you probably needed to install MySQL, maybe Redis, possibly Apache, and some specific version of PHP and whatever other dependencies your project required. You're probably working on a team or with some friends, so everyone most likely has different versions of these programs installed. Or maybe you're working on multiple projects that require different versions of these programs. You don't want to upgrade or else you're going to break some older projects that require the older versions. You're kind of stuck. Wouldn't it be great if you could specify some system requirements for each individual project and store those requirements right in the project folder? Then everyone collaborating on your project would be working in an identical environment. No more, well, it worked on my machine, meet Docker. And that's what you see right here, this Docker compose file. Docker is a program that allows us to create an environment for our application to run inside of. They call these environments containers. Think of a container as a super ultra lightweight virtual computer. You can have one container or hundreds and thousands of containers. And each container can have its own programs installed. So we could theoretically have one container running PHP version 7.3 with one application and then an entirely different container running PHP 8.0, running entirely different application, all on the same computer, all running at the same time. Sounds pretty awesome, right? It's like the Laravel creators are trying to give us a little hint with this Docker Compose file. Docker isn't unique to Laravel. Anyone can use Docker. So we could choose to ignore it and go about developing our application the traditional way, or we could see what Docker's all about. So I say let's give this a whirl. First things first, let's jump back over to Google Chrome. And I'm going to go up here and let's go to docker.com. So chances are, if this is your first go around with Docker, you don't have it installed on your system yet. So click on Get Started. And then right here under the Docker desktop, you want to download for your system environment. For me, I'm using Mac. If you're using Windows, go ahead and download for Windows. So go ahead and pause this video, install Docker, and come back once Docker is ready to roll. So this is the Docker logo. It looks like a little whale container ship with containers on top of it. You should get the little Docker icon up here in the top right hand corner of your screen. Go ahead and click on that and we're going to open up the dashboard. So at this point in time, it says no containers are running. If we click on images, we don't have any images. That's because this is a fresh installation of Docker and we haven't created any containers and we haven't downloaded any images. Fortunately for us, Laravel made it pretty simple to get up and going, so you really don't need a whole lot of Docker knowledge or background information to get started using it. If you'd like me to do a deeper dive video on Docker and how it works, leave a comment down below, and if I get enough feedback on it, maybe I'll go ahead and do a specific Docker video. But for right now, this is really all you need to do to get up and going with Laravel and Docker. So I'm going to click this little X right here, and it'll stay running right here, so it's still running in the background. Now that Docker is installed, I can close out the docker.com tab. We're back at our Laravel application, and I'm just going to go back over to Terminal. 
So now that we have Docker installed, we don't really need to use the PHP artisan serve command on our local machine. So I'm going to press control C to stop this local web server. So one of the other packages that Laravel 8 installed when we ran our create Laravel project command is a package called Laravel sale. Now what Laravel sale does is allows us to interact with our Docker environment without really having to tinker too much with Docker itself. It gives us a few commands that we can run on our local machine that execute inside of this special Docker container environment. So the first command we're going to use is a sale command. Now, like I said, sale is a package that was installed automatically when we ran our composer create project for Laravel 8. So we should be able to run dot slash vendor slash bin slash sale and then a space and then just the word up. Now what that's going to do is if we jump back over to our VS code and we look at this docker compose file. So when we run the sale up command, it's going to look at this docker dash compose dot yaml file. And these are kind of like some build instructions. And this is going to tell Docker what to build. And by default, it's going to create four new Docker containers for us. So we have our Laravel test, which is going to house the environment for all the source code of our application. If we scroll down, right now Selenium is commented out. This is something that you would use for testing. And then if you come down, the next one is MySQL. So it's going to create another container with MySQL running. So for our ports, it's going to forward our local port 3306 to the port on this container of 3306. It's going to bind the two ports together. So when we run commands on our local host environment in our terminal, it's going to execute those commands on our container running MySQL. So 3306 on our local machine is pointing at port 3306 on our MySQL container. The next one is Redis, and this is going to bind the port 6379 on our local machine to 6379 on our container. Again, this is just allowing us to run commands on our local machine and have it point at ports inside of our Docker containers. We have a memcache container that's commented out by default. And lastly, we have a mailhog Docker container. Then down here, we're defining some networks. We're calling this network sale and we're using the bridge driver. Now I'm not doing a deep dive on Docker itself. I just want you guys to see that this is here for us to use inside or alongside of our Laravel projects. If you want to see me do a deeper dive, comment down below and let me know you want to hear more about Docker and we'll do a much more thorough video on what Docker is, how it works, what is Docker Compose, and what are Docker files. So let's jump back over to our terminal. So now that we understand when we run this sale up command, it's going to look at that Docker compose file and create some containers for us. It's also going to download the images for those containers. So the first time you run this command, it's going to download each image for each one of those containers, and then it's going to spin up each individual container using that image. So if it takes a little long the first time around, don't worry. The subsequent times that you run this sale up command, it's going to go much quicker. So let's go ahead and run this sale up. All right, at this point in time, I think that took about three, maybe four minutes to get to this point on my local machine. And we should have Docker containers up and running. So I'm gonna click right here on my Docker icon and go to dashboard again. Now the first thing we see is this container slash apps. I called my app blog. So now I see this new blog item and it says it's running. We didn't have that before. And if I click this, I get a drop down list of the containers that are running within this blog environment. So the first one I see is blog underscore Laravel dot test underscore one. Then I see blog underscore MySQL underscore one, blog underscore Redis underscore one, and blog underscore Mailhog underscore one. So these are separate containers all running to create my Laravel environment. Now let's take a look under images and you'll see we have some new images right now. We have sale dash 8.0, MySQL, Redis, Ubuntu, and then Mailhog. So these weren't here before. When we ran that command sale up, it went and downloaded all these images and then it used these images to create these containers right here that our blog application is using. So I'm gonna close out of this and let's jump back over into Chrome. 
Now, since we stopped our PHP artisan serve command, if I refresh this, there's nothing here because we're not using PHP artisan serve anymore. We're using Docker. So I should be able to just type local host. And here we go. I'm currently viewing my project that's running inside of that Docker environment. Let's jump back over to our terminal. We'll do terminal and I'm going to use command T to open up a new terminal window. So now that we have Laravel installed and it's running in Docker, let's run some PHP artisan commands and make sure everything's working. So let's just do PHP artisan migrate just to run the default migrations for the Laravel 8 application. And there we go. We were able to migrate everything. So this is actually hitting our MySQL container running inside of Docker. Now, if we take a look at our VS code and we come over here to our environment file, by default, it's saying to use the DB host of localhost or 127.0.0.1. And since we bound this 3306 port to our Docker container running MySQL's 3306 port, this is what allows us to run commands on our local machine and have it affect the database running inside of a Docker container. So let's just say for whatever reason, we didn't want to run these commands on our local computer. We wanted to use Laravel sail and run these commands right inside of our container environment. Well, we can do that. If we come up here and click on the little Docker icon and we go to dashboard, I'm going to expand this blog and I'm looking for this right here. So MySQL 8 is running in a container called blog underscore MySQL underscore one. That's the name of the container. So I could come back here and change this to say blog underscore MySQL underscore one. I'm going to leave it as port 3306 because I want to hit port 3306 within this container. I'm going to save this and let's open up our terminal again. So this time, if I run PHP artisan migrate, I just changed the DB host name. So if I run this again, it's not going to work. I'm going to get an error. Right now, it's trying to hit that MySQL port and it's going to time out. So we should get an error in a second. I'm going to fast forward this. All right, so we can see operation timed out. And that's because since we changed the DB host in our environment file, we're no longer hitting localhost we're hitting this weird name of blog underscore MySQL underscore one. So let me go ahead and clear this out. Now let's try and run that PHP artisan command inside of our container environment. To do that, we can use that dot slash vendor slash bin slash sale. So we're saying use the sale package and I want you to run this command inside of my Docker environment. So the command is exactly the same, except we can drop the PHP in the beginning. So we should be able to say sale artisan migrate and then press enter. This time we got nothing to migrate because we already ran our migrations. If I press the up arrow and just say migrate fresh. And now we were able to run those migrations again. So using vendor slash bin slash sale is kind of like saying run this command inside of my Docker environment. If you don't use sale, you're running the command on your local machine. So both of these will work and you can do this both ways. But if you're going to do this inside of your Docker environment, you want to use sale and you need to update your .env file to let sale know where is my SQL, where is that database at. In my instance, I was able to look and it was blog underscore MySQL underscore one. If you called your project something different, chances are the container for your MySQL is going to be named something different. So if you want to use sale, make sure you update your DB host. If you're going to use your local environment to run those commands, you can use regular old PHP artisan migrate and other PHP artisan commands as well. You could even say sale and then npm install. So that just went ahead and ran our npm install, but it did it inside of our Docker environment. It didn't do it on our local machine. It did it inside of that Docker container. We could still run it here and say npm install, but we're not going to. As you get going with Laravel 8 and you start leveraging Docker containers, sometimes having the ability to run these commands inside of the container is a lot nicer than being able to run it in your local environment. You might have two or three Laravel projects up at once and you want to go into that specific project folder 
run a specific command that only affects that Docker environment. And then in that instance, you would use this sale package. So I want to go ahead and clear this out. And let me jump back over into Chrome. So at this point in time, you should be able to get a Laravel project up and going using Docker and Docker containers. Depending on what you're working on, you can use local commands in your local terminal, or you can use the Laravel sale package to run those commands inside of the Docker container. Chances are you'll be able to get away with running those commands locally, but I just wanted to give you a little preview of Laravel sale and a little bit about what it can do to help you work on your projects. If you're curious about more options with Laravel sale, let's go ahead and jump over to the Laravel documentation. If you click on documentation and you come down here to packages and then you click on sale, right here on the laravel.com website, they actually have a lot of information that you can read to learn more about sale. Sometimes typing period slash vendor slash bin slash sale can be a little cumbersome. So they actually show you right here, you can create this alias that will allow you to just type the word sale and then up inside of your terminal. So depending on how much you like sale or how often you plan on using this, something like this sale up would be a lot easier than typing dot slash vendor slash bin slash sale. One last thing I want to show you, I'm going to close this out. Let's jump back over into our terminal and I'm going to come back over to our sale up command we ran earlier. Now, if we want to stop this process from running, we can just hit control C and that will stop all of our Docker containers. So we can see there were four containers done, 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 and done. If we come back up here to a Docker and we click on dashboard, we can see that block has exited. So it's no longer running. We don't see the little running word under here anymore. I'm gonna close this out. And if we jump back over into our Chrome browser and we refresh our application, it's no longer available to us because we stopped those containers from running. Let's jump back over to our terminal. And I just wanna show you how quickly this can get up and going the next time around. Now that we've already downloaded those images, I'm just gonna run that same command we ran earlier with period slash vendor slash bin slash sale up. So that's it, our container environment's up and running. If I jump back over into Chrome and I refresh, my environment's already up and going. So like I said, the first time you run that, it's gonna take a little bit longer, but now that it has the images, we can get up and going very quickly with our Laravel project inside of Docker. So I hope you learned something in this video. I'm probably gonna be using Laravel with Docker in future tutorials. So I wanted to take a minute and kind of go over what Docker is and how Laravel is used inside of Docker so that you aren't confused down the road if you see me running this sail up command or using Docker in future tutorials. Hopefully you learned something in this video. I'm gonna be posting more videos about Laravel, probably Docker, Vue.js, I do some stuff on Golang as well. So go ahead, like, subscribe, hit the little bell icon so you get notifications, and I'll see you in the next video.